A few months back I came across a, this article in the New Yorker and it had me pondering this very question. Are physical independent bookstores a thing of the past? In times of bigger um, chain bookstores like Barnes & Noble and massive online giants like Amazon, are independent bookstores doomed to be extinct? I did some research, all of my sources are down below in the description. Let's find out. Let us first have a look at how we arrived at the point where we are today. Because bookselling has always been a bit of a tricky business. Until the invention of mass printing, books were actually quite expensive. It isn't until the mid 19th century that books became more readily available to the public through printers themselves. The development of steam powered printing presses and mechanized typesetting made making books en masse much more easier and much cheaper. But even then we have to wait until the midst of the 20th century to see books become a more consumer type of product. It was publishers like Penguin Press who aimed to make books more readily available, cheaper and as easily bought as a packet of cigarettes. Now the main problem with selling books has always been that there are too many books. <laughs> By as early as 1940, about 180 million books were produced. But for the US only, for example, you had about 2,800 outlets. And it is impossible to stock them all. The overhead costs of owning a brick and mortar bookshop and have it as big as you can with as big of a warehouse as you can to put as many books as possible on display is simply too high. And book margins are simply too low. So by the 1970s, 80s, depending on where you are in the world, a new phenomenon arose. The book chain store. These are your Barnes and Nobles, your Waterstones of the world, and they had serious advantages over the independent bookstore. For starters, they were often much cheaper, but they were also often larger, and they could have a larger selection on display for people to browse. And the third advantage that they often had is that they were embedded in malls, shopping centers, and department stores, so they could offer their customers a one-stop shop experience. And it worked. In no time, they were responsible for a big chunk of all book sales. And the result was clear. The number of chain stores began to rise, and the number of independent bookstores began to fall. Then, all of a sudden, in 1995, everything changed again. Amazon was born. Now, at first, this was not the Amazon that we know today. E-commerce was still in its very infancy and if anyone was selling anything at all on the unit already, it wasn't books. In fact, a lot of people thought that Jeff Bezos was absolutely crazy in trying to sell books on the internet. The margins on other products were simply much, much higher, much more profitable. Now, you can either love Jeff Bezos or hate him, but you have to admire him because his intuition paid off big time. And many did it because he solved the problem of distribution. He could put virtually all the books on display. Now, this does of course not mean that Amazon has warehouses where they stock about any book in the world. No, they have a clever distribution system where they have some books in their own stock and others can be uh, delivered to your door in a very, very rapid pace from the publisher, from the printer. Amazon changed the game and it became one of the absolute biggest players in the market overnight. It had solved the distribution problem and adopted the discount strategy of the big chain stores. And that wasn't all. Amazon recognized the trend of e-reading very early and it doubled down on the book market with Kindle. Results? Amazon now claims 67% of the e-book market across the US and books are still the most favorite category, the most visited category on Amazon. 71% of UK readers and 67% of US readers have bought a book on Amazon in the last year. And if you look across all book formats, well, Amazon now owns 60 up to 70% market share across the world in selling books. In the meantime, let's do a little poll of ourselves. Have you used Amazon or any online book selling service in the last year. Let me know down below in the comments and we'll see how my viewers hold up to the general public. But now let's go on with the video. By the 2000s, the old independent bookstore on the corner of your street seemed to be destined for extinction very rapidly. And then the COVID pandemic hit. 
All of a sudden, we were confined to our houses with little or nothing to do. So he discovered reading again. Now, while book sales were up, the book sale turnover for your old brick and mortar bookstore declined with 31% in the first half of 2020 alone. Some bookstores even saw their year-to-year -year sales numbers decline with as much as 80%. Readers simply didn't find their way to the bookstore anymore, out of fear or simply because they weren't allowed to. Despite several attempts and several programs to keep local bookstores afloat, there were book boxes, there were deliveries, many of them had to close their doors for good that year. Amazon, however, thrived during those pandemic years, absolutely solidifying their place as market leader, seemingly for good. But then something unexpected happened. Now, as the pandemic slowly died down and we were all released into the wild again, um, it soon became clear that the pandemic had forced certain lifestyle changes upon us that we weren't going to relinquish anytime soon. Reading books was suddenly popular again, mainly because of the success of bookish social media and celebrity authors like Colleen Hoover, for example. We did, however, have an urge to go outside again and meet up with people, especially like-minded people. And that was the one thing that Amazon couldn't provide. Local bookstores had been under pressure for decades now, and everybody knew that something had to change or they would vanish. So they did change. If we look at successful bookstores today, they are no longer um, that spitting image of the gloomy, dusty bookshop with piles and piles of old books stacked on top of each other and a stern looking uh, person behind the counter looking at you uh, like they would prefer that you just went away. Bookstores today have become community spaces. All of a sudden, the bookstore has become a place where you go, have your coffee, maybe meet friends. It is the place where you meet your book club, where you uh, listen to interviews with your favorite authors and queue in the hope to get an autograph. It's not that bookish events were new, but they had never ever before been ingrained into bookstore DNA this firm. Bookstores also learn to adapt to this new strange world of bookish social media. Visit the bookstore today and you'll probably see a table as seen on TikTok. They now speak the meme language that many of us book lovers do. Bookstores also now understand this new urge that readers seem to have to advertise their love of reading. They started offering you little extras. A bookstore bookmark a bookstore tote bag. All things online sellers didn't provide and you could show off to your bookish friends because, hey, you're a reader. Bookstores even became the new heroes on social media, gathering a following of potential customers up in the thousands. All of a sudden, your local independent bookstore saw a lot of innovation. Some cut out the overhead brick and mortar costs by taking their bookstore on the road. Books on wheels, books on boats, books that pop up at Ren Fair events or Comic Cons. And others, well, they hyper specialized. In a world where you can find almost any book online, they opted for a store that hyper specializes in one genre, in one age group, in one demographic. There are now bookstores that specialize in banned books, bookstores that specialize in YA. There are now even bookstores that only cater to romance readers. Spicy or not. And again, all of these places have become community places where you can meet up with your people and swoon over your bookish boyfriends. And this pivot works. Since the all-time low that we saw during the COVID pandemic, well, the number of independent bookstores is on the rise again, all over the world. Yes, the margins are still slim and the competition is still murderous, but it does seem that your old independent bookstore at the corner has successfully defended its niche and is about to keep doing so. Thanks to customer service, thanks to human contact and community building, and mostly thanks to the ability to understand what we as readers want, these bookstores have survived. So this kind of answers our initial question. Are bookstores a waste of space? No, because they fulfill, nowadays at least, many more roles in society than they did before. They have become social hubs for your tribe of people. They are places where you meet up with friends, where you talk books, where you go to events and have a coffee. It isn't just about selling books anymore, it is about the bookstore experience. And that 
is a clever marketing trick. But now I want to hear from you. Do you still shop at local independent bookstores or have you turned online all the way? Do you think that independent bookstores will stick around or are they indeed the dinosaurs of this bookish age and we will see them go extinct? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll talk bookstores some more. Oh yeah, and one last thing that I have to mention about Amazon and these big chain bookstores is that they tend to sell very popular books, bestsellers. But the truth about these bestsellers is quite astonishing as well. If you want to know, you can find out in this video. In the meantime, thank you for watching. See you next time.